doing is, is a very, it's, it's a tough squat. It's a full body workout which requires you to really concentrate. The rowing scene is small. It's small, it will get better. It is something that I do every week. Like, it's part of my life really. If I don't have rowing, I, I'll just stay at home, do nothing. Rowing is a really healthy sport and it actually shapes your perseverance and many other ways in your character. I started rowing when I was in Sec 4, when I was 16, and um, since then I enjoyed the sport very much. I was actually talent scouted during an um, inter-school inter competition by a national rower then. In rowing, you need height and build, so before I even step on the rowing machine, the person actually picked me out and told me to try out rowing. I'm Aisha. I'm a rower and I quit my job to pursue my dreams in rowing and this is my story. I started playing netball since I was 10 and I had to quit netball because I had to concentrate more on rowing and I also play a few sports such as ultimate frisbee and sometimes soccer as well. I find rowing very interesting, it's a totally different sport and I know it's not very famous in Singapore but when I got on the boat, it, it's just a different feeling, it's a very amazing feeling that can glide on water and I feel that when I first got my first medal, which was only one month after I got into the boat, it actually motivated me to row more. was a very shy girl. Even when she was in um, K2, she was actually uh, one of the brightest in the class. She likes more sports. We are more to the sports. Quite adventurous and uh, she ride, she rode bike and she fell down <laughs> and uh, lost a tooth, front tooth. <laughs> Aisha is a, is a, how should I put it, a very stubborn kind of rower. Okay, She, she has on many occasions uh, cried on, on the boat, okay? And when you ask her what's going on, she won't tell you. And she will just keep on going. And in fact, she will keep on going harder and harder. Uh, and at the end of the session, we'll just find out from her that she, she was actually experiencing pain and which she just didn't want to tell, didn't want to tell me because she wanted to keep on going. Off the water, we are, we are good friends. But on the water, she's, she's just switched and goes into that mode where nobody can actually talk to her. She's just there. She knows what she wants, she just gets it. That over extension of the knees is going to take off. See where you take more pain to her. Okay? You have to be very careful of the over extension. Okay? Follow this dog. Uh, she tore her ligament, I think this is not on one occasion. She tore her ligaments on many occasions. Like I said, like I said, she won't tell me. At the end of the whole session, she will just keep it quiet. She will just roll, the, roll down the tears. And then at the end of the session, she will tell me it's painful. Once the day is over, we'll, I will ice, ice, the, uh, ice the leg, ice the knees, okay? get things back in order again. And tomorrow I'll see her again. Tomorrow she'll be back again for training. I wasn't around when she tore her ligament, but um, I've seen the effects of it. She had to remove a titanium screw uh, that was holding her ligament because um, it was causing her a lot of pain. She, she could bear the injury and I thought after that she would not want to continue with Roy, but she still went through, you see? I was picked for the games. I found out that I was being selected in um, June. Of course, I was happy that I got selected, and but it was also quite expected because I trained hard for it. We train six times a week. Most of the days, we train twice, and each training is about two hours. So it's about 12 trainings a week. They have been like training every day during the SEA Games period. I feel that they should be prepared enough to get medals back. I think they can do it and yeah, it's the right choice to send them for the games. 
I'm really proud of them and I hope that I can be one of them soon for the next SEA Games. A typical training session would be a 16 kilometers row. So they, they train for about a good one, uh, one and a half to two hours. Uh, that's where they will do all their water works. They will get their techniques right. And on other days where they are not on the water, they are in the gym, they are doing their, ergo se their ergometer sessions, uh, physical workouts, their weights. Hell <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, she she's start uh, early and mm -hmm. she finished late, and then she got all the blisters and all that. And like other girls, we got we got soft hand and all that. You know, sometimes we got some uh, family gathering. She got to miss it. It's quite beautiful. I do really fully hundred percent encourage her because um, it took a lot of time you know it could because you see she's not working she was she quit her job just because of training I'm upset because the 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 rowing association were not supporting her in fi financially she was not given allowance she didn't want to come to me for, for money you know because she, so I don't know where she got the money but maybe because she has some savings and all that yeah but I would like very much if they were to support her financially I think that should be fine I know her, her mom really is against um, her um, in rowing because firstly it's not bring her any financial benefit. So her mom is pretty much her own her biggest challenge in um, support. My parents have been divorced since I was in kindergarten, so I stay with my mom. She has a more negative view on my room because I stay with her and uh, she always doesn't see me around much and I don't help her out with her, uh, with her household chores and all that. She requires me to work so that I can support her as well. Um, my dad has a more positive view on my rowing because um, as long as I enjoy what I'm doing, I think he's fine with it and yeah, he has been supporting me just by, uh, by giving me a lot of moral support. There's not much that my parents can do but I understand the different ways they have been supporting me because um, of the different way uh, of how much time I spend with them and how much they actually know me. Because me and my partner just started rowing uh, early this year, the pair requires us to be very similar to each other and it requires us to uh, constantly be the same. I'm much taller than her but she's much heavier than me, so we are very two different rowers. Also, because of her school, uh, it has been affecting our training schedule a lot. Yeah, it's very difficult because both of us have different, like, we have different strength and different techniques. So we have to adjust and accommodate to each other when we row. When we first got onto the boat, we didn't know each other. I just knew her name was Aisha. And then. After we started rowing and training together for the following months and when training started to get more intense, we got to know each other more and we got closer as like the months and time passed. We could communicate, that's like one of the biggest things we overcome. We didn't expect so much from it, like we just wanted to do our best and like achieve what we can. It has always been an honour to represent Singapore in international events and um, especially in big events like the SEA Games. For the 26 SEA Games, which things work really well because um, we have been working really hard for it and we have been pre preparing for the SEA Games for months. The day before the finals, I was sick and on the day of the finals, Joanna had a temperature in the morning. It was about 38.6 degrees, so we were quite worried about it. But eventually, she managed to pull it through um, um, the coach advised her, whether, asked her whether she wanted to row or not and she made a decision to row and I think she didn't look back after that because we won a medal after that. Yeah. Considering the fact that Joanna and I fell sick before the race and we got a bronze after that, I think it's good enough for us. We got a medal and a certificate from the Singapore National Olympic Council and that was about it. I wasn't expecting anything much because I won a bronze medal in the previous SEA Games as well and this 
exactly what I got, the same thing. I've uh, learned to accept the fact that Singapore don't give out money for bronze and silver medalists, yeah. It's my passion and I really love to row and I don't think I can live without rowing. When I was injured and I lived through a year without rowing, I felt something amiss in my life. So um, I guess what really pushes me is my ultimate dream which is to be in the Olympics and yeah. And it's not about the price, money or um, how much support I get but I think it's what I really want. What uh, I wish things would change around Singapore is um, that they will give more support to smaller sports like us, like rowing and uh, even, even if they can't give financial support, maybe more exposure for our sport so that more people can join and we have a um, large group of people where we can train with and maybe compete with. I guess one person who motivates me throughout my, this entire journey is my boyfriend Nazri because um, there's many times when I feel like I'm, I want to give up and I just want to quit rowing and find a proper job but he managed to pull me back into rowing again. He was the one who brought me back into rowing after my surgery and yeah, I guess he's the one I appreciate the most. It's very worth it. I, I believe in loving what I do and doing what I love. Sometimes we listen to other people but sometimes we shouldn't. We just have to listen to our heart and what we really want. If you really love your sport, you shouldn't let anything get in between you and your sport. Yeah.